Hi, I'm host Eric, and welcome back to Talking with Famous People and Eric's Blow Everything Up Metaphysics. That's right. I'm here to blow more stuff up. Why? Because somebody else is exhibiting, can you guess what? That's right, wrongness. This time it's another guest. Which guest could it be? It could be David and his integral theory. So I'm going to explain why David is wrong. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to do. I love this activity, explaining why other people are wrong. That was a great fucking interview, David, uh, Zach, and Tony. That second one is really good, I got to tell you. Really good. I'm really happy. I'm stoked to see that interview. But, now it's time to get down to business. Two big problems. There are a couple big problems here. First of all, let's hear some things that are red flags. Levels. Life is not a karate class. You are not trying to get a black belt. Okay? Mystical titles. Sage. Enlightenment. Red flag. Red flag. Inclusionary logic. Also called mush. Um, but, you know, let's start here with this notion of ego, which is one of my faves. Okay. So, it is reclaiming time. The day of reckoning has arrived. It is reclaiming time. What are we reclaiming today? Say we're reclaiming the word enlightenment from the intuitive intuitors, the introverted intuitors, who defined it and who somehow tricked extroverted intuitors like David into buying into this bullshit. Now, luck. Enlightenment is not oneness with everything. It is not the sound of one hand clapping. It's you right now. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with you. You don't need to be more enlightened than you are. You're fine. You're perfectly good. Well, surely we could improve spiritually. <laughs> not like this. Not by getting rid of the ego. Reclaim that shit. I'm reclaiming it right now. Ego is good. Egolessness is bad. When we seek egolessness, we are saying our divinity is inadequate. And yet it's not. We are whole. We are complete. There's nothing wrong with you. You don't need to go up a level. You don't need to get 10 more experience points so you can become level 7. I wonder, as these individuals move up in their levels, if when they hit level 6 or whatever, they go, Whew, it's a lot better today than it was yesterday when it was at level 5. I feel totally different. I'm like super enlightened now. I'm gonna go fuck shit up all over the place. I'm nearing sage mode. Sage mode. Um, inclusionary logic. Let's talk about what that means. When he says that basically that nothing's wrong, <laughs> that we can't eliminate possibilities, he is using inclusionary logic and saying we're gonna find a way to make everything fit into the whole, and we're gonna met up until we can. Probably is basically the strategy. Um, <laughs> near, 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 near. Why near? Well, look. First of all, your model fails to distinguish between two crucial things we have to keep in mind at all times. There are two kinds of mechanisms. More than two, but two main ones we need to worry about. One is binary and one is sliding scale. 
Some things have their states be on off. Some things have a, are land somewhere along a sliding spectrum, and that's just the nature of things in the universe. So when we're talking about inclusionary logic, we are not understanding that, right? We're saying, oh well, we'll figure out a way where everything can fit in. Blah, blah, blah. Well, you can't do that with binary things if the alternative to it, the thing you're trying to fit in together, is actually exclusive. Now, you can try to claim some spiritual transcendence of the notion of exclusivity, but to deny the law of contradictions is to basically say, uh, I refuse to be accountable for any idea's consistency with anything. And at that point, you're just sliding down into the morass of, of arbitrary daydreams. It's no longer meaningful. So we want to get rid of all things that have inclusionary logic, which is to say, we're going to find a way to make all this shit fit in and nothing be wrong. Well, that's wrong step number one. You can't have a situation where nothing is wrong. <laughs> I mean, if you want to establish any claims whatsoever, as soon as you establish a claim, you necessarily establish that the exclusionary claim is wrong. It's implicit in what you're saying. Grammar dictates a truth value to statements. You can't make statements without a truth value. Ay so, then, is anything wrong? Yeah. Well, what's wrong, Eric? How do you know? Well, you have to have a system in place. You can't just throw darts at the wall and say, yeah, that's right, that's wrong. I just decide randomly, willy-nilly. No, it needs to be consistent with core values. It needs to be consistent with with the foundational axioms that you've discovered that are, in fact, defensible. Not the ones that you want to be true. The ones that are defensible. Who cares what you want, anyway? It's like, why do you even want one, some one thing to be true over another? Who cares, right? It doesn't matter. What's important, the only thing that matters, is that you pick the strongest arguments. It doesn't matter what they are. When people get attached to their, their ideas in this fashion, what they're saying is either, I know, I know because I know which arguments lose and which arguments win. Therefore, that's all the truth there is anyway. That's, that's, that's as true as things get, you know? You know something's true, when it kicks all the other arguments asses time and time again, and when like even a clumsy person can beat a good debater with an idea, I mean, you know that it's dead. Right? The idea is totally dead. It's like trying to run domino theory, which I'm doing in my fucking... I want to run that in LD. That's crazy old school fucking 80s debate, you know? Oh, I was going to call the domino theory thing, where if we don't go and blow up the Middle East, they're gonna, everyone's going to become Muslim. Ego. I split over it. I split with AI over this. The ego thing. I was told over and over again, you need to smash the ego into dust. You need to be egoless. They were so fucking wrong. They were completely wrong. They, they obviously were. I left AA, I became immediately happier. I was able to do my own shit for my own reasons. I wasn't constantly questioning myself. Is this motive pure enough or not? Uh, well, what is your motive anyway? Well, I want attention. Well, you, you can't have that if you're crashing the, crushing the ego into dust, can you? I have a better idea. How about I take out one of these and one of these and say, fuck you, and I'll go do what I want and be happy. How about that? Turns out there's nothing wrong with me. It turns out there's nothing wrong with you either. You don't need to level up. You don't need to become a sage. You already are. You don't need to go enlightened, you already are. When somebody comes and dressed in a robe and says that they're a sage, you um, say, oh, I love the smell of you in the wild brush outside or something. I don't know. You don't, uh, you certainly don't afford them any credit for being anything. If you are somebody who's walking around either, uh, either granting to another person sage status or claiming yourself to be a sage in any way, or pursuing sagehood. 
It's right in front of your face. You're standing in it right now. Anybody who's telling you you've got the, to, to, to jump through a bunch of hoops to become human, which you already are, they're sticking things up your butt. Okay? They're sticking, they're sticking like things like this, this size, and this, you know, just one after another. You know, oh, what is it down there? I really, really need to get to sagehood and enlightenment now. No, you need to stop sticking this bullshit up your ass. That's what you need to do. Look, very simple. Enlightenment will be this. Living forever and always getting what you want. That would be enlightenment, okay? There's no, there's no other enlightenment than that. When you, when Siddhartha 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 it was impossible to watch sit out the dress, sit out to sit down, sit out the tree. And at that moment he released some mysteries. Sit out to relate, sit out his mind. And impossible to watch sit out the dress, sit out to sit down, sit out the tree. And at that moment he released some mysteries. Sit out the recoil at the sight. Siddhartha would toil at the plight. Siddhartha would toil, had it right. Siddhartha Siddhartha, Siddhartha, where are you now? The fantasy is to have Siddhartha here in front of me. Well, that's what it is. It's a fantasy. It's the same fantasy that gives us, gets us to hand over control of ourselves to some other human being and say, here, you take care of me. Enlightenment entails one quality for sure for the ENTP. We get our own enlightenment. The rest of you guys can have your boring enlightenment. We're going to have good shit, all right? Nothing but the good shit around here. ENTPs have good enlightenment. ENTPs, if you want to join us, you're welcome to have good enlightenment with us. If you want to have their shitty, stupid enlightenment, you can go have it. Good enlightenment is absolutely awash in ego gratification, first of all. Okay? I mean, just, you are just fucking swimming in it. Well, why not? Why, why should that not be my enlightenment? I feel enlightened when I'm awash in ego gratification. Okay? Why is that inferior to your... Because yours has incense and bells? Yeah, well, I call shenanigans on that. So, you can take your incense and your bells, and you can go be go do your boring enlightenment for a few weeks. But then you get back here, I have, I'll have to like pile up like six packs of enlightenment dew, and I'm going to have like a bag of enlightenment Doritos. I'm going to get, I have a special medal from the Buddha. It says, you are hereby enlightened. You made it to level nine. You're going to kick ass and take names. No levels, no enlightenment. You're already there. Fuck everybody who tells you you've got work to do. You don't. You've got fun to have. 